Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. Let's continue to build up the base and get it into proper working order. So I'm going to try some more creative building. So far the only creative thing I've done really is this. And I suppose the path, kind of. I'm still very slowly waiting for this grass to spread. It's gone... Uh, four blocks. It'll get there some year. Yeah, creating, uh, creative building is not exactly my strong suit. Or maybe it is, I just haven't really done it before. Every time I've played Minecraft in the past, uh, the previous mod packs that I've tried, I've never really done creative building at all. I've always just done functional building. But let's try it out. So first thing I want to make is a place to put all my storage. Seems like the most important thing is to sort all this junk so I know where the heck stuff is. So I'm going to try to... I, I kind of want to follow this aesthetic, sort of. I really like how these look. I like the idea of it being raised off the ground a little bit. So let's do something similar to that, but bigger. So let's just make a bunch more of that. What is that? Um, disarray vertical. That one. Does this thing not have durability? I'm used to, when I've played with the chisel, it's had durability, and by chiseling stuff, you take down the durability. But I don't see any durability bar appearing when I use it. I'm not going to complain, it's just a little bit strange. So we want this to be fairly big, since we want it to house all of our storage, plus, you know, a little bit of a growing room. Let's make it a little bit bigger. I gotta be kind of careful when I'm using the shovel, because I know it can go into super speed mode any second and just like wreck a whole chunk of land. So that'll be a foot, that'll be a foot, that'll be a foot. And that'll be one. You know what I should do? There are tools to help you build stuff uh, fast. Should be some sort of a builder's wand, yes. Gold and two bits of magical wood. Okay, let me see if I can make this. Okay, so we can make some magical wood by doing gold and a bookshelf. This will take four levels each time. Both of those, plus a gold ingot, and we have a builder's wand. This thing is going to be incredibly handy. I don't think I've used this iteration of the Builder's Wand, but it should function the same as the ones I've done. So here's what it is going to allow us to do. If we built this out like this... So this is the floor, right? I'm going to clear it out so you can see the posts and all that. But we got the posts down, this is going to be the floor of the place. So now, to fill out all the way to the other posts, it's just going to be a lot of drudgery, right? So I gotta put every single block along here, and it's gonna take a while, and it's boring. Well, with the builder's wand. And there you go. Yeah, it just allows you to continue whatever pattern you already have, basically. I have no idea how to switch its modes. There's probably modes you can switch between. I'm unfamiliar with this one, but yeah. And there you go. Way faster. So this time, instead of like I did with my bed, I want a roof on this thing. You know what? I think we have forged micro blocks on this, don't we? We do. I don't know how they work. Forged micro blocks is kind of similar to chisel and bits, where you can make stuff smaller. Because I want these to be pillars. I could just do the same chisel and bits way that I made these. Which I might do. I'll probably just do that. Alright, I ripped out the floor real fast before I uh, built too much. Because I realized I didn't want it to be as thick. I wanted it to be thinner, kind of like this. And I could accomplish that using chisel and bits just like I did with this. By kind of just going under the whole thing and just taking it off of each block and making it thinner. But... Um, I think there's a better way to do bulk work like that, because that would take quite a while. There's a diamond bit saw, which is also from Chisel and Bits. 
and it allows you to cut blocks into smaller shapes. So I can cut this stack into half as high. And then I think I want it thinner than that. I think you can cut it again. Yeah. So that should be more what I'm looking for. Yeah, much better. It'll, it'll look better once I kind of maybe take away the grass from around here, because right now you can't see that there's like an underneath. But yeah, that'll be good. Much better. And then I should be able to use the Builder's Wand on this just the same. Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. How cool is that? Much better looking. Hmm, never mind, this actually isn't going to work. This didn't quite do what I thought it did. So you see the block boundary here? Ends right here. So this plank is actually at the bottom of a, of a block boundary. And unfortunately, Chiseling Bits plays nice with other Chiseling Bits stuff, but it doesn't play nice with normal stuff. Meaning... Other stuff will only be placed on top of the next available block. And since this is at the bottom of a block, Technically, this whole block is taken up, and if you play something, it goes like this, and it floats. You can't place anything below it. Which means I can't put anything on the floor, and it would just float, and it would be pretty terrible. So I need this to not be at the bottom of this block boundary, but at the top of this one. And unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any really easy way to do that with this. Uh, if you hold down Sneak, you can force it to not snap. And you can place it at... You can place it on a per bit basis, kind of wherever you want. So I could place it just here, and that's great, but then I have to do that for every piece. You can't even Builder's Wand it. That's completely unacceptable. Hmm. Hey, pig. Yeah, it's quite a conundrum, isn't it? Ideally, I would just make slabs out of these. Most things you can make slabs out of. Like, can you make slabs out of this? Yeah, so three in a row of most things turn into the slab version, which is half as high, but unfortunately not with these chiseled things. I could do it with the original oak wood, but not with the chiseled oak planks, the kind with a different texture. Hmm, maybe I'll go back to what I was doing before and just take out the bottom. Alright, so I want a thatch roofing, and I'm going to get into a mod that I haven't tried before, but I've seen a little bit about it, called Architecture Craft. So I made a bunch of thatch, which is just made with a 2x2 pattern of wheat. And now I'm going to try to make, like, proper slanted roofs. It's a little bit hard for me to visualize which kind of pieces I need to complete the roof, but I know I definitely need a bunch of these. And I think a bunch of these. Let's uh, see how this goes. I also made a couple of the tools from Architecture Craft, the chisel and the hammer. I have no idea what they do, but I guess I'll find out. I'm sure they're important. So this would be a corner piece, for example, right? That's not the right way. Oh, hello. Yeah, okay. And then this would go... Eh. Yeah, I've, I saw some tutorials of people messing with it, and it seems pretty hard to place the blocks the correct orientation. Like, <laughs> look at that. Alright, what does Chisel do? I think the Chisel might take off cladding, which is like a cover that you can put on top of stuff. And that rotates... Uh, this is going to take a while, isn't it? Yeah, so it seems like to place it correctly. Yeah, um... So if you want it facing... towards you, you gotta... Like, if I want this side facing towards me, I've gotta place it at the bottom half of a block like this. If you place it on the side, it'll kind of orient to the side and not straight. If you pr place it on the top, it's upside down. So you gotta aim at the bottom of a place like that. Which is... Really finicky. Like, 
Damn, that's finicky. I'm guessing you have to hit the inner corner here too. Ah, I clicked on the wrong spot. Damn, yeah, these look good, but this is gonna take a while. I'm gonna finish this roof, but I don't know if I'll do the same thing for other ones. It's even got these really cool overhang pieces. But to be able to place them correctly, I've got to place a whole, like, scaffolding thing. It really is a lot of work. There's even corner pieces for this, too. Man, it looks so good, but... Oh, I don't think it's worth all the effort. It pains me to say. Like, I was originally going to make a, a whole pointed roof all the way to the, like, the tip, but no way. That would take forever. I'm just going to make this a flat thatch roof. Starting from this point here. I don't remember what I was doing last, before the last cut. I know I was going to do this out of thatch. I don't know if I mentioned, though, that I ran out of wheat, so I can't finish this quite yet. But, oh my god. Baby zombies are kind of cute, but also running at you with such ferocity is really freaking creepy. Ugh. Anyway. So I'm going to make an upgrade to our storage system, because I'm tired of searching around in chests. You know, chests are very... Um, they're not visual things, because you can't see what's inside of them until you open them. There's sort of, you know, sort of ways around that, like you can make item frames that allow you to put an item inside of them and display it. So you could have, for example, an item frame on the outside of a chest that has an ingot in it, and that would indicate that's the ingot chest. So you could kind of make it visual, but it's still not very good. What's a much better solution to making a more visual storage system, and also one that's much easier to use, in many ways, is using storage drawers. So I already used a couple things with storage drawers. Yeah, that one with cobblestone and a netherrack, and then what did I put in this one? Oh, I guess more netherrack and sand. So I used a couple drawers, but now I'm going to use more varieties of drawers, and I'm also going to make use of a drawer controller, which is going to be very cool. So let me lay these all out. Okay, so I've got a bunch of storage drawers set up here, in a variety of shapes, so I've got a bunch of 2x2s. Two it's going to hold kind of the bulk items. I mean, like, you know, the bulk of our items, which most items we don't have a lot of, so we don't need a lot of storage space for each one. Each one of these quarters supports, I think, four stacks by default, unless you upgrade the drawers. And then we've got a bunch of 2x2s, two 8 stacks per each one, and then a bunch of full ones. Well, not a bunch, but a couple full ones, just for the super, super bulk stuff like cobblestone. Maybe sand and dirt and things like that. And we have our drawer controller. So here's what's useful about the drawer controller. This thing is basically connected to the entire network of drawers. All of them. So remember what I showed you before, where you could, for example... If you had, say, some dirt in this one, and then you double right click on it, if you notice my help bar, I've got the dirt, double right click, and it takes it. That's great, but that only works for that one specific item. A much better way to do it is, let's say, you've got some stone up here, you've got some dirt up here, and we got some bread over here. So we have bread, uh, stone, and dirt in the system. And we have those things in our inventory. Now instead of right clicking, double right clicking on any specific drawer to dump just that one thing, now if you double right click on the drawer controller, it'll connect to the entire system and dump all of those things, if it's in the system. So because these three things are in the system and they're in my hotbar, double right click, and it distributes them out to here. So it's a very nice way, you know, you come home from uh, mining or something like that, and you got cobblestone, you have ore and ingots and stuff like that, and then try, instead of trying to go from chest to chest, like, okay, some of this goes here, okay, some of this goes here, some of this goes here, instead you can just, like, double right click, and it just fills it all out. It's gonna save a lot of time. Okay, that took a long time. Whew. So I've got things roughly sorted out. I don't have every single item inside of the drawers, because a lot of things I don't think are really worth giving a slot to. Just like lots of random things, you know, compressor generator, electric furnace, whatnot, machine casings. I'm not going to get like stacks of that stuff. 
And a lot of this is going to be assembled quite quickly. Like all these coke bricks and, you know, electric furnace. I'm going to set that back up how it was before. But I put stuff in that I thought I'd probably get a significant amount of and I'd want ready access to. So like there's a whole section for ingots, there's a whole section for ores. Some wood, gems up there, huge bulk things, plates and wires. All like non-edible, plantable, seed kind of things. So it's roughly sorted out. Now if you go out for some junk and you come back here, you can double right click this and most stuff should go in there. I don't have any place for edible food because I think I want to store my food somewhere else probably. I'll figure that out later. Anyway, there's little bits and bobs left in every one of these chests, but I processed out most of it and I even um, emptied out my gold backpack and just put in what I think was important to take. Basically all the, uh, you know, tools and stuff. Basically all my tools and wires and connectors and things like that and manuals. Stuff that I probably will commonly need in the field and would want on me at all times. Anyway, I am very eager to do something other than sorting inventories. Let's, um, let's set up some of the old equipment, huh? What should I get working first? The water wheel? I want a power source. The thing is, I actually kind of want to make, like, <laughs> I want to get the water wheels working, but they weren't providing that much power. I kind of want to do the thermo electric generator. Can I do that? Steel can do that. Constantine, Constantan. Uh, nickel and copper. Yeah, I can do that. It's not too bad. Coil block, lot of copper wire, and some sticks. I could totally make that. Um, the only thing about thermoelectric generators is that they don't look nearly as cool as a water wheel. They're just a block in the ground with some lava and water around them. Basically, they work on the difference in temperature to generate electricity. So you'd put a thermoelectric generator here, and then on one side you'd put lava, and the other side you'd put water, and that temperature difference would generate power. And they're pretty good, and very dependable, but yeah, they don't look nearly as pretty as water wheels. So I'm, I'm gonna get the water wheels up and going. There we go. So that's the basic setup I'm thinking. I think I'm going to have water pour over the top of it this way so that it kind of goes back into the sea. I think it looks already a lot better than before. Just having two sides makes it look better because having it with just one side connected just looks weird. Like, there's no way that that one thing on the side could support the weight of that entire water wheel. So two sides, much better. Uh, now I want to try out something that I haven't done before. It's getting dark. See, I always get annoyed that it's hard to work up there because I need to connect a bunch of things and, you know, the LV connector, the mech energy cube thing. So I figure, well, you know, if you're trying to work in an area, what do you need? You need, like, some sort of scaffolding. Some sort of work area. So, I just searched for scaffolding and there's this IC2 scaffold. Super cheap to make. Let's see how this looks. Oh, you can't put it in the air? Oh, I think the scaffolding can only be put next to other scaffolding. It has to, like, build up, I think. Whoa. What the? Oh my god. If you keep left clicking it, it actually just builds it up. Well, that's interesting. Oh, and if you take it out at the bottom, the whole thing comes down. Oh my god, this stuff's amazing. So if you wanted to make a tower, a huge, huge tower, like this, you can go all the way up, come down, if you want to take the whole thing down. Boop. Wow, this stuff's really cool. Okay. So I can just do... Oh, I'm out of it. My god, I love this stuff. I can't believe I never used it before. Do 
can create a nice little work surface. Awesome. All right. So let's go ahead and reconnect this thing. Um, I guess... That's right, the episode was lost where I actually connected this stuff up, so let me just show you me connecting it. Maybe I should put a bucket of water down to make sure it works. Nah. It'll be fine. So I put the mega energy cube down. It looks like, thankfully, it does save the power that was in it when you break it. Some blocks save whatever was in them, some blocks don't. This one does, thankfully. It's got a bunch of power stored, so whenever this generates power, when this is spinning, it'll automatically transfer it into here. Don't need a wire or anything like that, just by touching the block, it's enough. And then, if we... Let's come from the top. We come from the top and we go into a transformer. Connect these two. Oh wait, no, 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 what am I doing? That's right, I don't need to. You don't need that connector. Because it's touching it, I think the LV transformer will automatically work. I don't think my old setup had that, but it most likely will. And we want to set this to fixed step down. It's going to be getting, so this thing, if you look at it, max output 80 EU per tick. So this thing will take it up to 128 EU and turn it into the output of 32. So it'll turn it into low voltage. Then, I think we need to use a connector. I think that's the output. Um, I think we need another scaffold here. See, the problem is I could uh, I want to connect this to a bat box, and if I put the bat box right here, I think it'll try to connect automatically to the energy cube, which might output too much and make it explode or something. Power tier 1, yeah, so it, it has to be low voltage. Feels wrong that that's not touching the ground, but I'll stick with it. So we'll connect that to the bat box. I think it can, can connect to any side, just this is the only output. Another tin connector. Hopefully that can reach. Yes. It clips a little bit, but it doesn't stop you from doing it, thankfully. If it clips, like, a lot, then it will prevent you from making a connection. So now we're going from a RF energy generation thing to a mechanism energy cube, which converts it into EU, but it's too high voltage, so the LV transformer takes it in EU, steps it down to a lower voltage, which goes into this bat box, which is, you don't actually need to go into a bat box, it's just yet another battery that gives me more storage. So I feel a little bit more comfortable kind of having the bat box in between the transformer. I don't know, feel safer or something. And then we should be able to go from that to a machine. I guess I'll just get some water and make sure it works. Make sure it doesn't explode. This is the part that's a little bit weird. I don't know any way to make this look good. I mean, it's just floating infinite water on top of a water wheel. Uh, eventually, maybe I'll... Uh, once I get more technologically advanced, perhaps I'll make some sort of a pump system that will hook up here. And it won't actually really be a pump. I won't actually be using the pumps, but maybe it would look better if there was a pump. So at least you could see that there's some sort of process that got the water up here. Uh, but I guess I'll just do that. Alright. One problem. It's not making power. There we go, got it working. Um, yeah, I think the problem was this is, this one side that has this like yellow bit, that's actually the input. I don't know, I get so confused about what's the input and what's the output on these EU machines, these IC2 machines. 
because it's the reverse from the bat box. For the bat box, I believe every single side is an input, except for this one side here that has this little circle, and that's the one output. But this one, it has the one input, and everything else is an output? I don't know. I don't get it. It's not consistent. But anyway, it works. Oh, another cool thing I just learned about the scaffolding, by the way, is not only that whole, like, you can construct it from the bottom thing, you take it out from the bottom, it, the whole thing comes down, but also, you can climb it. How cool is that? Stuff's amazing. Alright. Yeah, that looks like a proper... I mean, I mean, like, the scaffolding isn't exactly beautiful or anything, but it looks like a proper, properly supported water wheel, and the scaffolding looks like something you'd plausibly see at a construction site. I like it. A lot better than it was before. Alright, now I've just gotta hook that up to my machines. But I think I'm gonna save that for the next episode, because it's pretty late at night and I kinda need to eat and then edit this episode and then go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I feel pretty good about what I did. Got the power system up and going and it looks pretty nice. I experimented with chisel and bits and chisel and architecture craft and learned that it's hard to use but it makes very cool looking things, made this nice looking structure, and made a whole inventory system. Like let's look at these things for example, um, I've got some oak wood on me, sapling, stick, sand, that all should disappear. Oh I don't have oak wood in a section do I? Oh, no, now I do. Yeah. Double click on that, and then all that junk just goes away. I love it. Alright, so I hope, you, I hope you have enjoyed so far. Didn't quite get as much done as I thought I would in this episode, but that's alright. Going slow and steady, enjoying myself, making things look pretty. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to get the machines up and running and connected to the power system. Probably make some sort of a machine room or something like that. Get all that stuff kind of automated so that I can just throw a bunch of things into a chest and things will automatically macerate and and cook and stuff like that. And probably get the bloomeries up and going too. Kind of just my whole ore production and processing plant and hopefully the smeltery up and running as well. 